Thanks, everyone. So yeah, here today to talk about the Open Source Village, or rather the Open Source Village Network, because we're getting a lot of interest about this, and yeah, it's blowing up. Literally, not figuratively, thank God. Well, li figuratively, not literally, thank God. Uh, so I'm Alex, I'm based in Asia, I move around a lot. Uh, previously ran Space Gambit, which is an open source space program. We worked with NASA, DARPA, and the White House. Uh, now working on the Open Source Village project. And I really wish I, I actually bought those glasses instead of just taking a selfie in the shop. I'm going to have to 3D print a pair. So what I'm going to talk about, because we don't have a lot of time, I'm just going to focus on the what, the why, the technology, and the business model of the Open Source Village program. So, what is an open source village? Well, it's a network of real world villages. First of all, in China, and we're looking at expanding around the world. And when I say villages, I don't mean some platonic ideal, I don't mean some virtual reality village. I mean villages on the ground, you can walk around them, get your boots muddy. Uh, we're using open source as much as possible, and we see it as being A, a place where people can actually live but also a test bed for open and green tech. Uh, one of the reasons we're doing it is, well, we're using a lot of green tech. We're trying to be healthy for the environment. And the world isn't doing a very good job at being healthy for the environment. Uh, the urban population is going to double between 2007 and 2050. So if we can start by making changes in villages, maybe that can spread out to cities and beyond. Uh, why China specifically? I said people in general aren't very good at looking after the environment. That goes more so for China. But also in China, the government wants to fix this situation. Stuff gets done fast in China if you know the right people. And China makes all the hardware. So we'll be close to the supply chain, which means we can fail early, fail often, get some new kit in and redo it again and again until it actually works. This is the map of the nodes of the villages. Uh, the first one we're doing will be by Anhui. We're working with a satellite company, so it'll be space-themed. So as if open and green wasn't enough, now it's spacey as well. And we've got a couple near Xi'an and one in Guangxi that's interested as well. We're trying to hit as many of the UN Sustainability Development Goals as we can because we're all about digital fabrication, open source, green, all of that stuff, and that just ties in. And the Chinese government is really pushing these two. Uh, why open? Because we all love open source. Everyone at the company just thinks it's the right thing to do. But also it makes sense from a business model point of view. If you create anything successful in China, it's going to get copied. So locking down our IP from day one and trying to make money that way, it wouldn't fly. By making it open, it can be replicated. It'll hopefully become a standard. And we're the people who made that standard, or at least contributed largely to it, let's say. So we would be the experts. If people want to roll this out, they'd call us to do it. Ooh, some of the shiny tech we're going to be using. So as I said, we're working with open tech. but in version 1.0 of the village, we can't do it 100% open source. Let's say you want an open source washing machine. Th there's some stuff out there right now. I'm not sure if it's good enough. We've got to balance practicality and philosophy. Philosophy of being open source, practicality. Would people, would non-geeks actually want to live there? And I have what I call the granny test. It's, uh, for example, WikiHouse is an open source housing platform. My granny could happily live in one of those. She probably wouldn't live in an earth ship, which is made of mud bricks, or a hexa yurt, which I think is really cool, but it's a yurt. So we've got to deal with, uh, build it for the muggles, not for the wizards. Uh, we've got a big uh, Trello board linked to, to on our website with dozens and dozens of open technologies we're considering. Anybody can view it, and if you want to contribute, let me know and I'll add you as a contributor. At the core of each village, we have a fab lab. 
So like a hackerspace or a makerspace, it has lots of machine tools like laser cutters, CNC's, 3D printers, all the tools for electronics you need as well. So the aim is to build the parts of the village in there and bootstrap out, building layer by layer. Uh, we're looking at using WikiHouse for the architecture. We've got a scale model of part of it downstairs in the exhibition hall. Uh, it's all open source. You can go online and download the CAD files and take them to a CNC shop, cut the wood, and then a few people in a few days can actually put this thing together. And the instructions are just like IKEA. And just like IKEA, we messed it up the first time. <laughs> but hey, we're learning from our mistakes. Better to make mistakes with a small model than the full-size thing. Another technology I really like uh, came from POC21, which was an open source sustainability camp in Paris a few years ago. It's called Shower Loop. So you can save t up to 10 liters of water per shower because this takes the water that you're throwing down the drain, it filters it, it reheats it and pumps it back. Uh, we haven't built one of these yet. We're gonna have to do a lot of testing. Some people were saying users might get Legionnaire's disease if we don't filter the bacteria properly. That would be a bit of a bummer. Uh, POC21 was the innovation camp. Uh, it was 12 open source hardware projects for energy, housing, food, lots of stuff. Uh, they've done other stuff like Sunzilla, which is a portable uh, fold-out solar power array, uh, open source, of course. And we're going to be using a lot of these technologies, maybe running a similar camp ourselves. Uh, these are just a few more. There are the Acre Open Source Beehives, uh, Arduino Open Energy Monitors, Open Desk Furniture, Open Source Ecology. They're building the Global Village Construction Set, which is all the tools you need to build a village from scratch. So, and it's, they're very modular. So this is their tractor. You can reconfigure it a little bit into a, a minivan or something like that. The difference between us and them is they're working on the technology development side. Uh, we're working on the deployment and real-world testing side and using other tech besides that. That is Sunzilla. Uh, and AirPi is the Raspberry Pi open source air monitoring system. For implementation, 1.0 is by necessity going to be a mishmash of closed and open. There is some stuff already on the ground like power supply systems, like some buildings that are not fully open source. So, yeah, version 1.x, 1.1, 1.2 will be doing bug fixes. Version 2.0, we'll see what a major closed system is in the village and we'll replace it with an open system. And we'll do the same for 3.0, 4.0 until we have a completely open village spec. Uh, in terms of the business model, uh, we're looking for Linux for inspiration. I don't have to explain what Linux is here, I hope, or GNU slash Linux, I should be saying. Uh, but when we talk about Linux, we're not just talking about the kernel, or usually we're not. Usually when people talk about Linux, we're talking about the whole distribution. <coughs> you know, uh, the GNU tools, the Bash shell, X Windows, GNOME, all of the things that go on top. And Red Hat made over two billion revenue uh, last year from selling distributions of Linux. All that software is free, but maintaining it on your own is a headache. So that's how they make money, support and services. So we're looking at doing the same. Instead of a Linux kernel at the core, we have a Fab Lab. We have a bunch of things around it that make it a distribution in a way. Uh, some other open tech is FarmBot, which is CNC meets agriculture, and that's open source. Uh, yeah, we're looking at integrating some Burning Man values where appropriate, uh, due to high demand from the Chinese side. You know, I always thought that drugs and nudity would be a bit of a turnoff, but those are the things they've been really pushing for. We've also got the uh, VIP, the Village Improvement Platform. So once a year, between all of the different villages in the network, we have a summit. We figure out what the problems are, what feedback they're giving us. Then we run a design jam to design solutions, a hackathon to build the solutions, then we deploy them around the villages. So it's a bit like Tesla. Most cars get worse over time. Tesla pushes out software updates. 
So it's always improving. Ditto with the village improvement platform. Yep, financial sustainability from services and support, but also uh, helping villagers sell their exports in the wider market. That could be agriculture or handicrafts. Tourism, both eco-tourism and exper experiential tourism from people who want to learn more about this stuff. Uh, leasing accommodation, corporate sponsorship. Let's say uh, Microsoft wants to get more people using Azure Cloud, hopefully a Linux box in the Azure Cloud. They could work with us to sponsor some hackathons. And what we're calling, well, not what we're calling, what I'm calling desktop themes. So, as I said before, the first village, it has a space theme. So the space theme is an extra shell in the atom, I guess. So this is just a, a cosmetic thing. So if it's a cosmetic thing, I don't really care if the IP is closed or open. The core is what's important. And just like Linux can be used for so many things, even including bionic knees, I'd really like to see how the open source village core can be used for other purposes as well, like disaster relief or refugee shelters, or I don't know. Uh, we've had some interest from theme parks, so we'll see where that goes. Uh, you know, we want to be socially responsible, and if we don't give back to WikiHouse or ShowerLoop or any of the other technologies, they're not going to do so well, which means we won't do so well. So giving back code and financial contributions makes so much sense. The next steps, we are working on a new website, uh, partially because of the Great Firewall of China. Um, you know, we can get to GitHub today, we can get to Trello today, Will that always be accessible? Who knows? Um, and also, a lot of the stuff we have today is a lot more geek focused. Uh, like I know, we'll, well, most of us probably know how to use GitHub. The average uh, real estate developer in China or village chief hasn't even heard of GitHub. So we need to make one unified platform that's a wiki plus a blog plus GitHub plus Trello plus a platform for villagers to register their interest. That's going to be quite a bit of work. We're also launching a couple of maker federations. We're taking this very slowly. We want to do it right. Because we're partnering with a satellite village, we're launching a United Federation of Space Makers. I honestly don't know where that logo came from. First thing that came up on Google. Uh, another federation for open village members, that'll be the villages themselves plus people who want to contribute. Uh, as for getting involved, if you have a village or a project that wants to work with us on this as a place to deploy the open village core, uh, you can go to that URL, there's a humongous list of questions on our wiki that, yeah, if you can answer the, at least some of those and register your interest, we can talk more. We don't really have a way for contributors to sign up in any specific capacity yet. So if you have ideas on that, just get in touch via email or via Twitter. Uh, yeah, that's our contact info. And some credits for the images that we referenced because Creative Commons. And yeah, that's a lot for now. Thanks. No? Uh, I, uh, I have just one comment to share. Uh, I, I've been living in South Korea for a long time, and it's a place uh, where it's like almost everywhere very difficult to buy an apartment. And uh, uh, I know a community there, uh, they organize a co working place in Seoul, and they're looking to build a village for, so to say, digital nomads, like they say, but whatever, you know, it could be an open source village. And uh, uh, just, uh, there are a few communities that are trying to do that in South Korea as well. So maybe you guys could get in touch and help each other, not only in Definitely. China, but in South Korea. I'd be very happy about yeah, that. Um, I gave a talk a while ago in Hong Kong that was broadcast over Facebook Live or something, and people from all over the world got in touch. And I really want to see how we could work with uh, Korea, or how we could work with some of the people from the Middle East who got in touch. 
Uh, right now, we're focusing mostly on the concept and the core and building this up, but definitely. Any more? Okay, well, thanks very much, everyone. Um, if you want to see more of WikiHouse, we've got uh, a partial construction.